Welcome to Drinking the Kool-Aid. Welcome. I'm Megan. I'm Hannah. And you know today is part two of our story with Matthew Shepard. I do know. And the book that I used, again, is The Meaning of Matthew by his mom, Judy Shepard. I'll give you, I have a quick recap today. So Matt Shepard was a restless kid that moved a lot and tried several schools. He was struggling with depression and post-traumatic stress disorder, and he told his parents that he was unhappy, but they were in Saudi Arabia, so there wasn't a lot they could do to help right away. He eventually felt comfortable enough to tell his family that he was gay, and he was thrilled to find out that nothing changed. They loved him just the same. On October 8th, 1998, Matt's family received a call stating that Their son had sustained injuries, and he most likely wouldn't survive. He had been attacked by Aaron McKinney and Russell Henderson. They beat him until he was unconscious, tied him to a fence, and left him there to die. So we're starting today's story off with the attackers. Okay. So after they left Matt, they stopped at an intersection of 7th and Harney Streets where they encountered Jeremy Herrera and Emiliano Morales. And these two were out vandalizing vehicles. Oh, great. Right. And it's believed, like, we don't know for sure why Aaron and Russell ended up on this street, but it is believed that they were trying to go to... The false address that Matt had given in the last story where he said, like, hey, I've got 150 bucks. Go to my apartment. Oh, 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 that's right. Okay. They think they were going there to get the money. Good. So real great people. Yeah. All around. That's what we'll say. So they come across these two that are vandalizing cars and they all start cussing at each other. And Aaron pulled out his pistol and hit Emiliano on the head. I mean, really, I don't feel bad. No, I don't either, because, like, they're all out doing bad things. But at the same time, like, I have no idea how this escalated and how they even came across each other. Right. Um, When Jeremy saw what happened to his friend, he pulled out a club and struck Aaron in the head. What? Yeah. Okay. This gets so weird. So, so weird so fast. At 12.43 a.m., Officers received a vandalism call, and they saw Aaron McKinney and Russell Henderson, the ones that had attacked or and killed Matthew Shepard, okay? So the two of them were jumping into their truck. The officer saw that both had blood on them, and then they took off running. They were able to catch Russell after just a few minutes, and he claimed that they were on their way to a party, and they got jumped. Then he remembered that people from Fireside Bar had probably seen him that night. Ah, uh, whoops. You know, because he was there paying for his pitcher of beer with change. <laughs> <laughs> this is really funny to me. Uh, um, So he changes his story and he's like, well, actually, we had a third friend who disappeared and we were just out looking for him so we could go to a party. So he was talking about Matt. Okay. Yeah. Once the officer discovered the bloody gun in the truck, he was like, um, I actually think something else is going on here. This is a little suspicious. Yeah. Russell's girlfriend, 20-year-old Chastity Paisley, was a student at the University of Wyoming, and she assisted in the student union building, which meant she would have been part of the Gay Awareness Week. When she picked up Russell from the hospital, he said that he and Aaron had beaten up a gay guy and left him by Walmart. So she knew the location and that somebody had been harmed and she did nothing with this information. What? Yep, absolutely nothing. It was confirmed later to her that the guy that they roughed up, as they were saying, was left in a field. She still did nothing. What the fuck? And, you know, you might think like, oh, maybe she thinks she's going to be harmed. I don't know. But I don't because he's telling you what he did to somebody and you're just like, meh, 
Okay. Right. And this is not one of those situations where I'm like, I don't know what I would do. I would absolutely be getting all of somebody for help. Either contacting someone for help or maybe drive your ass out there. Right. Verify the story. See if, yeah. Is there a kid by Walmart? Hmm. Holy crap. Uh, so instead, they drove over to Aaron's apartment and they started putting their alibi together. Uh, they wanted to make sure they all had the same story for the police. Oh, naturally. Right. And here's their brilliant story. Russell and Aaron were going to say that somebody stole their truck and they were taking Matthew to a party and that's when they all got jumped. So they had nothing to do with whatever, you know, happened to him. But they got jumped and their truck stolen in one night? Yeah. Damn. Mm Mm-hmm. Aaron's girlfriend was not so keen on keeping a secret for them or, you know, like Russell's had been. He was dating Kristen Price and they had a son. So Aaron arrives home covered in blood and starts washing a wallet and told Kristen that she needed to turn off the lights and the TV. Oh, good God. Can you imagine? I would be so friggin' scared. And he's like, um, I think we killed a gay guy. I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, he hadn't died at that point just yet. No, I know. It's just, it's so awful that he's just like, I think we did. Yeah. And she did call the police because she did not want to get in trouble and lose her child. Thank God. Yeah, so I don't care has a brain. what the motive was. I'm glad that you were thinking about you and your kid. Yes. And you called. So this gets beyond crazy. Like how everybody's story syncs up here. When Matt arrived at Ivinson Memorial Hospital, he was not the only patient in the emergency room that was suffering from head trauma that night. His attacker, Aaron McKinney, was also there being treated by the same Dr. Cantway, and he also treated Emiliano Morales for a head injury that night, which was the guy that was out vandalizing cars. I, I don't even, I still don't even know what happened there. I feel like they just had like a mini bar brawl in the middle yeah. of the street for a minute. Exactly. No, I know. And the thing is, is like the fact that all three of them ended up at the same place with the same doctor just baffles me yeah. here. Both Matt and Aaron So Matt and his attacker were sent in separate ambulances to Fort Collins, and they were both treated by the same neurosurgeon. What What is happening? And I'm not going to say, like, this is on the doctors for not figuring out what's going on, because that's not really their job. They're there to treat a patient, but it's just bonkers here. But you got to think it is a little like suspicious when you're when you see three head injuries in one night. Well, and especially when they said like it's super rare to have a head injury there right. to begin with and three all at the same time. And I feel like this is just like one of those situations where like one person comes in with a gunshot wound and then the next person comes in with like an arm injury that <laughs> pertains to shooting a gun. It's like you think you can figure this one out. Right. You would think. Yeah. hmm Matt and his murderer were treated simultaneously in two separate hospitals by the same exact doctors, and nobody knew there was a connection. I mean, unreal. This is nuts. That's it. I just I can't yeah. <laughs> this is the craziest shit. Yeah. How? I I have no idea. No idea. Okay. So I wanted to put this in because it's actually a really cool part of the story. So the officer that originally came on the scene was named Reggie. uh, And she was the one that first held Matt. Why are you making that face? Reginald. Oh, Reginald Reginald Fairfield. Fairfield. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I clearly have no self-control. I'm sorry. No. Little boy meets world for (laughs) you. Sorry. Uh, and so she had a really remarkable story to share. She said that as she was running towards the fence to get Matt, when she got closer, she saw a large doe lying near him as if the doe had been like watching over him all night. That's the sense that she got. 
And then the deer took off running once she got too close. So it was an actual deer. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was going to be like a hallucination or an actual deer. No, it was okay. actual. Okay. Um, But it gave everyone a small ounce of comfort. Like, his parents liked knowing that he wasn't completely alone yeah. that night. I love that. Yeah. On the day of Matt's funeral, a local radio station broadcast the service so that people all over could listen. Because so many people are invested in this story. And when you get, like, super invested and really throw yourself at it you you almost feel like you lost someone yourself that's exactly right yeah. yeah in preparation of the service police had to bring bomb sniffing dogs to the churches and they planned to have a SWAT team across from the church and the police had to ask the family to wear bulletproof vests because protests were beginning and that just it sickens it makes me, me sick yep like, they're grieving the loss of their son. But let me guess, the protests were because he was a gay guy, right? Oh, that's exactly yep. right. Yeah. Well, fucking course. Uh-huh. Dennis and Judy had to wear bulletproof vests as they gave a speech to the crowd gathered outside Casper City Hall. Volunteers showed up to clean the church so that it would look, like, immaculate and beautiful for the service. Business in Casper, uh, businesses in Casper put up posters in their windows that had yellow ribbons with green circles. And the yellow was for tolerance and green is for peace. Love that. Yes, absolutely. People were taking a stand and demanding change. They were standing up against all the hatred and violence. After news broke that Matt died, candlelight vigils were being held in cities all over the world. Popular talk show host Ellen DeGeneres was deeply upset when she heard about the attack on Matt. And this was about a year after she had publicly announced that she was gay herself. Oh. And she said, quote, I went to the steps of Washington and spoke out and basically in tears was saying, this is why I did what I did, to hope that this would change the world. I mean... That was stupid and naive of me to think that I could actually make that kind of impact in the world by just coming out. It's estimated that 9,000 people gathered to protest and mourn, and the crowd was screaming Ellen's name. She grabbed the microphone and read a speech as tears were rolling down her cheeks. Now, the speech is long, but it's worth it. Okay. I'm also cutting three words out because I do not think they're useful to say, and I'll tell you where they are. Okay. Also, keep in mind, this was right after Ellen got fired from her TV show for coming out, so that's what she's referencing in the first line. Got it. All right. Well, just when they thought I'd shut up. I'm so pissed off. I can't stop crying. You know, I know we all feel the same way, and I'm here. He's got these two close friends here, and I don't even know him. I'm thinking, this is really selfish of me. I mean, pull yourself together. It just hit me why I'm so devastated by it. It's because this is what I was trying to stop. This is exactly why I did what I did. Boy, you see them come out in forces when they think a lesbian is going to be on a television show. The preachers come out then, but something like this happens? Where are they? Anyway, everybody's already said everything. You're hearing the same thing over and over again. I really didn't know what I was going to say. I just started writing on the plane and thought it was pretty good. Then Anne read what she wrote and I was going to throw it away. But I wrote it, so I'm going to say it. It is basically the same thing, over and over. I've been trying to figure out how to put into words what I want to say. My thoughts are that this world we live in is filled with hate, and darkness. Matthew Shepard was not the first hate crime. It happens every day. There are 2,500 reported this year. Many go unreported because most gays and lesbians are still in the closet for fear of this exact reason. When three white men dragged James Byrd Jr. behind the truck and killed him just because he was black, I felt the same way. I don't see full-paged ads saying stop the hate, stop the violence. These same evil, idiotic, so-called God-loving people who use the Bible to justify their hate. 
I'm sure still feel deep down that blacks aren't equal to whites because the Bible's also used to justify slavery. It took one man, one white man, Abraham Lincoln, to free the slaves. He wasn't very popular for doing it, but he knew it was the right thing to do. When Hitler was killing all the Jews, the church was silent. They did nothing. It was a few good Germans who helped hide the Jews. Right now, homosexuals are the target of, at the very least, discrimination, at the very worst, hate and violence. So I'm begging heterosexuals to see this as a wake-up call to help us and end the hate. Please raise your children with love and non-judgment. Tell them that everyone's got the right to love who they want to love. It shouldn't threaten you or who you are. Explain that this is not okay to call someone. And this is where I'm removing three derogatory words. Okay. We shouldn't be asked to change who we are. The millions of dollars the religious rights spend on print ads and TV ads could be spent helping to change the homeless or help change men who abuse women. Matthew Shepard wasn't hurting anyone. He was a good person, a gentle soul who was tortured to death. He is with God now, who I'm sure is crying. My torture goes on every time I think of what those boys did to him just because he was gay. When will we learn? Just because someone's black, just because someone's Jewish, just because someone's gay. This is a war. We need your help. Please search your hearts. Think of yourselves. Be on the right side, the side of love and compassion. To all of that, yes. Yeah. A million fucking times, yes. It's a very powerful speech. And when you watch it, seriously, she is just so devastated and with by good this. good fucking reason. Right. Exactly. This is just such a senseless act here. The Shepherd family had seen a lot of tragedy recently, but they weren't done. Don't tell me that. Uh, okay. No. So. No, 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 no. I know. So. I know. I, I was like, you've got to be kidding me here. Dennis's 81-year-old uncle passed away at Matt's service. Stop it! He <gasps> had a heart no. attack in the church's no. kitchen. No, no, no. Like, as he was on his way in. Oh, my God. Luckily, the family shielded Dennis and Judy from this until after their son's service was over, but then they had to attend a service for him three days after Matt's. Oh, my gosh. Three weeks later, Dennis's father, no. Harry Shepard, passed away from <gasps> undiagnosed leukemia. It was just too much stress. That's it. It was too much for them to handle. Stop. This is awful. I know. After the funerals, the family was trying to prepare themselves for a murder trial. They received word that Russell Henderson wanted to get a plea bargain. He was willing to plead guilty and testify against Aaron McKinney in exchange for two life sentences. The family did believe that Russell was not the one that murdered their son, but he did tie him to the fence, and he certainly didn't help him. Right, and I mean... Again, he was there. Yeah, he, he absolutely was. He could have stopped it at any time. He, he watched it all go down and did and not laughed. do anything. Yeah. So. Well, they realized that they wouldn't have to go through a trial and would know that he was getting the max sentence. So it actually kind of made sense for them. It took a little bit of that off. Okay. You know? Yeah. So I get it. A so-called church decided to do a demonstration outside on the day of sentencing, and instead of preaching love and unity, they made posters that are horrifying and disgusting and said awful things about Matt and how he was gay. What? And I just, I'll never understand that. What? First off, like... These people are grieving the loss of their son, and you're going to do that? I don't know how you can sleep at are night. Are you for real right now? Unfortunately, yeah. I, mm, I hate how common that is, too. Right. Leave people alone. Mind your own fucking business. I will 
luckily be able to tell you something very good that happened here, though. Finally. Okay. Finally. Uh, I think this is a beautiful act. So a good friend of Matt's showed up with a group of friends, and they called themselves Angel Action. They didn't fight back with their words. They took white sheets and PVC pipe and created angel costumes with giant wings. The angels circled the courthouse and blocked the protesters' view and made sure that nobody inside oh. had to see the hateful messages. Oh, you're giving me the goosebumps everywhere. All over. They're everywhere. As the group surrounded the area, Matt's friend Romaine read her statement. Before you stands a band of angels. We come from a number of backgrounds. We don't represent any one group, any one religion, sex, race, age, or sexual orientation. They are merely a group of people who joined with me because they believe in honesty and truth. So often, we find that people are willing to make a lot of noise about what they believe to be true. We don't believe that we have to say anything at all, aside from this brief explanatory statement. Our actions will speak for themselves. Just one look, and the truth is plainly clear. Our focus is to bring forth a message of peace and love. Hatred is running rampant through our everyday lives. But, as a group, we choose to lift ourselves above the hatred. We feel, as so many others do, that love and compassion for our community and our humanity are the answers that so many people are desperately searching for. And so, we bring forth a message from God, if you will. Love, respect, and compassion for everyone is why we are here today. I could no longer sit idly by and watch others bring forth messages that were nothing more than vindictive and hate-filled. As a young person, I feel it necessary to show the great nation that we live in that there doesn't need to be this kind of violence and hatred in our world, and that loving one another doesn't mean that we have to compromise our beliefs. It simply means that we choose to be compassionate and respectful of others. Whoa. So, that's one really good thing that happened here. Yes. And the fact that this group of people out of nowhere shows up as angels and make sure that no one inside has to see these hateful messages. No, it's incredible. Oh my gosh. It's see you're giving me goosebumps again. <laughs> but he just like it legitimately messes with my mind. Though. I was like, as you're reading that, I was just like it it messes with my mind the fact that there are people that are that loving out there and yeah. like that peaceful. And then there's the complete opposite spectrum. Sure. Where they just, there's so many people that hate for literally no reason. Right. Shit they make up in their head. And it's just like, don't you have anything better to do with your life? Like let people live, stop getting in their shit, stay in your own lane. Exactly. And just be nice. Yeah. It is like really not that difficult. And it just, it just, messes with me man that there's just so much freaking hate out there still and the fact that they went out there and chose besides the speech to not say anything right they didn't fight back yeah that speaks so much so like, much wow romaine and her angels used compassion and creativity that day their work inspired thousands of people to do the same thing and you guys you can download a do-it-yourself angel kit online. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Isn't that listen. so cool? Huh. We might have to do this. It's yeah. like a summer project. Yeah. <laughs> I, if it happens, it. we'll post pictures. So show. <laughs> uh, Dude, I want to make Isaac do it. <laughs> he will. I'm. So <laughs> if you're listening, guess what you're doing this summer? You're an angel. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So hopefully, you guys aren't upset over all these quotes in this one today. I I've am got not more. upset. Okay. Good. I just love knowing what people are saying. No, I do too. So here is the victim statement that Judy, uh, Matthew Shepard's mom, read in court. She says, "Quote." I want to thank the court for this opportunity to talk about Matt, 
I feel that I must try to share with you what Matt's life and death have meant to us. It is important that he be revealed to you as a loving, vibrant, kind young man. You need to see him as we do to try and understand our loss. However, I'm not sure we really understand it yet ourselves. I love Matt more than I can express in this statement. There aren't enough words to describe how much I love him. We shared so much. Late night talks, trying to solve the problem of surviving in this world as we saw them. Politics, love of good movies and bad, theater, books, good food, and conversation. He was my son, my firstborn, and more. He was my friend, my confidant, my constant reminder of how good life can be and ultimately how hurtful. I will never, ever understand why anyone would hurt or why anyone would want to hurt Matt to act with such cruelty, such disregard for another human being. What would our lives be like now without Matt? Logan had planned to attend the University of Wyoming. He and Matt were going to share an apartment, both looking forward to the time they would spend together, getting to know each other once again. That hope was killed. All our hopes for Matt were killed. All the hopes and dreams that were Matt's were killed for $20 and some twisted reason known only to his killers. How have our lives changed? I can't answer that yet. I know personally that there is a hole in my life. I will never experience Matt's laugh, his wonderful hugs, his stories, hear about his ambitions for the future. There are days when I think I can't go on. Then I remember Logan and Dennis, our extended families and our wonderful friends, new and old. I know their love and support will sustain me. I know Matt would be very disappointed in me if I gave up. He would be disappointed in us all if we gave up. Who? Are you getting all the feels here? I am because I'm just like sitting over here so sad for her. Like specifically when she said like, um, the, that he showed her like how much one can love, yeah, and like how or like how happy life can be, and yeah. then how like awful too. That like broke my freaking heart, dude. I know, and I mean, she clearly is very good with her words, and that's why her book turned out so well. No, like God, it is yeah. such a good read. During sentencing, Judge Donnell said. Mr. Henderson, you drove the vehicle that took Matthew Shepard to his death. You bound him to the fence in order that he might be more savagely beaten um, and in order, order that he might not escape to tell his tale. You left him out there for 18 hours knowing full well that he was there, perhaps having an opportunity to save his life and you did nothing. Mr. Henderson, this court does not believe that you really feel any remorse for your part in this matter, and I wonder whether you fully realize the gravity of what you've done. The court finds it appropriate, therefore, that sentence be ordered as followed. As to count three, that being felony murder with robbery, you are to serve a term of imprisonment for the term of your natural life. On count one, kidnapping, that you serve a period of imprisonment for the term of your natural life. Sentence for count one to run consecutive to sentencing for count three. You're shaking your head. You it's agree? So, You're down with that? Sorry. <laughs> I forgot to respond because I was like so I just into it. Bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My bad. Well, Russell Henderson did try to give like some bullshit story about how he felt remorseful oh, I'm but sure like the judge said they didn't buy it judy no. said she didn't buy it so i was like you know what we don't even need that in here and he straight up said like the judge even said like i don't think you understand like yeah what you've truly done here and i think he's i think correct. he's right yeah, yeah definitely on october 11th almost a year after matt's murder more than 600 people gathered in laramie for a candlelight vigil in his honor and this was followed by a Peter, Paul, and Mary tribute concert. Okay, that's actually really cool. It is. Two young men. Okay. They hiked an 80-mile journey to put 150 bears on the fence that Matthew had been tied to. Each bear represented a different hate crime victim. Stop. 
Look at, can we, oh my god, look at, oh my god, my, <laughs> they're everywhere. I just think those simple acts of kindness are the coolest thing. And like yeah. the fact that people come up with it and are willing to do it is so cool. You literally like made my arm hair stand straight up. <laughs> <laughs> When it came to Aaron McKinney's case, they talked about how he experienced traumatic sexual experiences as a child. So basically, they argued that when Matt allegedly made a sexual advance towards Aaron, he was embarrassed and had like an out of body experience. And that's why he murdered him. Um, <laughs> well, except not. Um. <laughs> I mean, Russell already said that he wasn't touching him in the vehicle like Aaron claimed. Yeah. So. Uh, but it, they're using the gay panic defense, okay? Of That's course, what it boils, yep. boils down to here. But the judge ruled against this tactic. Thank God. Right. Yeah. Smart judge. The jury reached a decision after only 10 hours of deliberation. When it came to premeditated murder, the jury voted 11 to 1 in favor of it, so Aaron was not getting a first-degree murder verdict. A few hours later, Matt's parents were told that Aaron wanted to make a deal. He agreed to never appeal and to never talk to the press or profit from the case in exchange for two consecutive life sentences instead of the death penalty. This would mean that the family would never have to worry about Aaron or Russell getting out, and they could avoid the sentencing phase. So they took the deal. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you never know the outcome no, of what you the don't. jury is going to do. Well, not only that, but going and through it all. Yeah. Having and a, rehashing. And yeah. yeah. And I mean, you're bringing all that shit right back up again and having to go home and deal with it at night. It's like. Yeah. And this way, like, you know, they're not getting out. Right. So, yeah, I think it's great. Matt's father, Dennis, made a speech, and it is actually really long, so I only took a few pieces of it. He says, quote, I would like to begin my statement by addressing the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, a terrible crime was committed in Laramie 13 months ago. Because of that crime, the reputation of the city of Laramie, the University of Wyoming, and the state of Wyoming because synonymous with gay bashing, hate crimes, and brutality. While some of this reputation may be deserved, it was blown out of proportion by our friends in the media. Yesterday, you, the jury, showed the world that Wyoming and the city of Laramie will not tolerate hate crimes. Yes, this was a hate crime, pure and simple, with the added ingredient of robbery. My son Matthew paid a terrible price to open the eyes of all of us who live in Wyoming, the United States, and the world to the unjust and unnecessary fears, discrimination, and intolerance that members of the gay community face every day. Yesterday's decision by you showed true courage and made a statement. That statement is that Wyoming is the equality state that Wyoming will not tolerate discrimination based on sexual orientation, that violence is not the solution. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the respect and admiration of Matthew's family and friends and of countless strangers around the world. Be proud of what you accomplished. You may have prevented another family from losing a son or daughter. Your Honor, I would also like to thank you for the dignity and grace with which this trial was conducted. Repeated attempts to distract the court from the true purpose of this trial failed because of your attentiveness, knowledge, and willingness to take a stand and make a new law in the area of sexual orientation and the gay panic defense. By doing so, you have empathized that Matthew was a human being with all the rights and responsibilities and protections of any citizen of Wyoming. My son Matthew did not look like a winner. After all, he was small for his age, weighing at most 110 pounds and standing only 5 feet 2 inches tall. He was rather uncoordinated and wore braces from the age of 13 until the day he died. However, in his all-too-brief life, he proved he was a winner. My son, 
a gentle, caring soul, proved that he was as tough as, if not tougher than, anyone I have ever heard of or known. On October 6, 1998, my son tried to show the world that he could win again. On October 12, 1998, my firstborn son and my hero lost. On October 12th, my firstborn son and my hero died 50 days before his 22nd birthday. He died quietly, surrounded by family and friends, with his mother and brother holding his hand. All that I have now are memories. Well, you're going to take me down on this one. Ooh. This story Ooh. is just rough. The tears are trying to come through. <laughs> Don't do it. The things that his parents Ooh. say are just incredible. If I could, like, round of applause right now, yeah, I absolutely would. Mm -hmm. After Matt was attacked, the family received thousands of cards and letters, and there was almost $90,000 in donations because people were trying to help pay for Matt's hospital bills. Uh, they actually said that a bunch of the donations were coming from his school, like the students were sending money to him. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. The family wanted to ensure that his legacy was bigger than his murder. On December 1st, 1998, which would have been his 22nd birthday, the Matthew Shepard Foundation was started. Judy wanted to be fully informed on issues before she started fighting back, and so she met with a group that could educate her on hate crime laws. The idea behind the laws was that somebody who committed a crime and was motivated by the victim's perceived differences, like race, religion, sexual orientation, or physical handicap, would face, like, a harsher uh, penalty. Okay. Random acts of violence against others is always tragic, but violent crimes based on prejudice have a much stronger impact because the motive is to terrorize an entire community. Yep. Yep. Hate crimes are more violent because the attacker is trying to send a message of their intolerance. A federal hate crime law that had been in place for almost 30 years before Matt was killed um, did not include sexual orientation protection. After a lot of research, the family settled on including the following three areas of focus in their foundation. Uh, the first would be to erase hate. Yes! This would include educating society about all the aspects of hate, whether it's based on race, ethnicity, gender, or sexual orientation. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> uh, the next one is... Lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender equality. Yes! This is the work that would have meant the most to Matt, his family says, because it includes supporting groups like the Human Rights Campaign and their fight for marriage equality, for employment non-discrimination laws, and for an end to the military's ban on openly gay service members. Oh, yes! And the last one is put children first. The goal is to educate the public on the needs of the gay and lesbian youth. Love. Love. All of it. Love. So on board with all of those ideas. Judy Shepard and other speakers go to schools. So she goes around now to different community groups and workplaces to encourage straight allies to join the LGBT movement. And I absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. That, I mean... To be able to go out and impact when you've been through what you have. Yeah. And I think that people hearing the story directly from her or the source, you know, like... It's more impactful. It, it is, 100%. Like, understanding what she had to go through. Yep. And now she's trying to change the world. I love it. Yeah. The Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act of 2009 was designed to enhance penalties in hate crimes, also involving gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, or disability. I'll end with a quote from the Matthew Shepard Foundation. The life and death of Matthew Shepard changed the way we talk about and deal with hate in America. 
Since his death, Matt's legacy has challenged and inspired millions of individuals to erase hate in all its forms. Although Matt's life was short, his story continues to have great impact on young and old alike. His legacy lives on in thousands of people who actively fight to replace hate with understanding, compassion, and acceptance. And that's the story of Matthew Shepard. That was a lot. That was heavy. Yes. That was so heavy, but so, so needed to know. Like, word needs to be out there. People need to hear this story if they haven't. Right. Yeah. And people need to really realize that this is still very strong. The hate is still very strong. Racism is still very strong. Yeah. Nothing's changed. I mean- Some things have, I think some areas have gotten a little better, but I'm not personally, you know, in it. So I can't say that. I don't know how others are feeling. Right. But from my personal perspective, I feel like there's at least a lot of allies. Like, you know, when I'm talking to my friends, they are all allies. Right. And that is a good change to see. Oh, yeah. I mean, man, every year when we get ready to go to Pride, I got like a whole ass group of people because they're all like, let's go. Right. And uh, the majority of my friends are straight. Well, actually. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a second. I, was, I like paused <laughs> as soon as I said it. I was like, wait, now that I now that I think about it. Rewind. <laughs> That is invalid. Okay. (laughs) But uh, some of my friends are straight. Yes. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. And I will tell you, like, all of us are always there because we support 100%. There's no reason not to. Exactly. There's literally none. Well, either way, no matter what your belief is, hate and violence isn't the answer. That's it. And that's fact. And if you, like, disagree with something about it, just, again, stay in your own lane. Just leave it alone. Just, like, watch some Boy Meets World. You're fine. Be mad in your own head about it. That, too. Yeah, just leave it alone. Eat some tacos. Taco! Taco! (laughs) (laughs) And that's, that's it. (laughs) All right. So, make sure to... Follow us on any of your podcast apps. Tell us the stories you want to hear. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Leave us a five-star review if you love us. Tell your friends. Tell your cats. Um, Bye. bye.